Um, welcome to my talk. I'm going to talk about taking uh, backups with Laravel. Um, my name is Freek van der Herten. I'm a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. Uh, like probably many of you, uh, I am active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Meurze. And I have my own blog where I talk about uh, Laravel development and modern PHP development in general. Together with these two awesome guys, I organized the PHP uh, Antwerp uh, user group. If you're ever in the vicinity of Antwerp and want to speak at our user group, contact us. We're happy with every speaker and with every level and length of talk. Now my company has been around since 2003. We create websites, applications, and web shops, and we're quite small. We're only with four developers and one manager that guides us, and we specialize in Laravel development. Now, before I uh, give my talk on the backups, I want to uh, talk a little bit about open source software first. Now, in my company, we use a lot of open source software. We use Nginx, we use Laravel, we use Ubuntu, basically everything listed at this slide. When you open up composer.json or package.json, package yeah, all those things are free of use. And without open source software, our company couldn't really exist. And I bet that many of you thank your job due to the fact that open source software uh, exists too. So because we use a lot of it, we try to give back, and we also create a lot of open source software. We currently have 90 packages listed on packages. Most of them are Laravel, but we've got a, quite a few framework agnostic PHP ones as well. And recently we, bo we broke the 2 million download mark, and currently the packages are being downloaded at a rate of 300,000 a month, which is great that our work is being used. A little humble brag, uh, this is the GitHub award site, which just sums up the amount of stars that GitHub repos of an organization have. And you see there's Laravel uh, at the top with 50,000 stars, but we're at number six worldwide. So this is really great. Uh, and yeah, we like the fact that people star our repos. Um, creating open source software for us uh, has a lot of benefits. Uh, first and foremost, we learn a lot by just creating uh, the software and by uh, the issues that um, our, our users post. Because with every issue, we see that there's a chance to learn. Same with the PR that uh, gets sent in. Um, the benefit for us is that we can see uh, the perspective from, from another programmer, how he would approach this. And the benefit for the uh, guy or woman that um, posts the PR is that they get a free code review. So it's a, it's a win for everybody. Every, everybody is learning. Um, another benefit is that we're also forced to write documentation and tests. Some, sometimes in a client project, we don't have really time for that. But uh, with open source software, you really must write documentation every, uh, because if you don't have documentation, nobody will use your software. If you don't write tests, yeah, then it's a little bit scary to change uh, the software. Um, there's a commercial aspect to it, it, uh, of it as well. It shows uh, the quality of our work. If you uh, take a look at the source code, then I hope you'll conclude that we know our way around PHP and Laravel. And of course, we use those packages in our own project as well. So if we uh, open up our composer.json, a lot of our own things are there. I'd like to take some time to very quickly introduce a few of those packages to you. Maybe they could be helpful to your next project. So the first one is a Laravel specific one, Laravel media library. And in short, this one can associate files with eloquent models. So you have uh, a news item model, and you have a file, then you can it, put it in a collection of images. In the second line of code, if you have an uh, image in that collection, you can generate an URL to that, so you can display it on your site. 
Now, the package can also convert images. It can generate thumbnails and such, and it can also give you URLs to those thumbnails. And if you're working with big files, then you'll be happy to know that the package has uh, support for external file systems, so it's very easy to um, handle a big file and just copy it over to uh, S3. So that's media library. We've also, also created uh, a dashboard. So this is, uh, um, this is displayed on a TV uh, hanging in our office. It uses the latest versions of uh, Laravel in uh, view, and it's easily extensible to add tiles to it. Not going to explain it in depth here. That's a talk on its own. Um, next, this is something we use ourselves as well. It's an uptime monitor. We use this to check if the um, sites of our clients are up. Now, there are a lot of uh, other alternatives that you can use, like opt uptime robot and such. Um, the benefit of, the, of our uptime monitor is that it's, that it's free and you can add as many hosts as you want. So it can notify you via Slack when something goes wrong. So the first uh, screenshot there from our Slack channel, Laravel is down, can notify you uh, that uh, a site comes back up. There's a second screenshot. And as a bonus, it can also warn you when an uh, SSL certificate is going to expire. So a few days before it expires, you'll get a notification so your site won't uh, uh, won't go down, you still have time to uh, refresh your certificate. So that's uptime monitor. Um, fractalistic. Um, I love the fractal package from the leak. Uh, for those who don't know that, that's a package that can transform data uh, to a format that it can be easily used in uh, your APIs. And I use the fractal package from the leak uh, basically on every project, but it's a little bit unwieldy to work with. You have an array with data, then you have to instantiate a manager, then you have to create a collection, uh, a resource, which is a collection of books and a transformer. Then you have to ask the manager to parse some includes to include the, the characters of the data. And then you have to ask the manager to create data for the resource and add it to the array. Yeah, I can't remember this. So I made a, a wrapper around it that makes it very simple. So you create an instance of Fractal, you give it a collection, you transform it with a certain class, you include the characters, and you are going to transform that to an array, which is, in my mind, much easier to, to use. The last, one, uh, the last one that I'm going to touch on very quickly is our response cache um, package. And this one can be used to speed up your Laravel application immensely. And it does that just by caching your response. So whenever a request comes into your application, Laravel will handle it and make a, a response. And we are going to save that response. So the next time the same request comes in, we're not going to start up Laravel entirely. We're just going to send the saved response. And this um, makes your application much faster. Now, if you ever heard of Varnish, um, Varnish does, does a little bit of the same, but Varnish uh, goes a step further. Uh, Varnish doesn't even start up PHP when it has, has cached something. So Varnish is a lot faster than this package. But the uh, uh, advantage of using Laravel response cache is that unlike Varnish, uh, the whole package can be configured in your Laravel application. And with Varnish, you have to install extra software on your server and you have to learn how to configure uh, Varnish. And with this package, you can basically uh, use it with the knowledge you already have. So that's a few of our packages. You'll find uh, a big list on our company website for the Laravel specific ones. We also have a page for the uh, framework agnostic ones, so check that out. Now, I should maybe have told you this earlier, those packages are not free. They uh, have a special license called Postcardware. So if uh, any of our packages makes it into your production environment, you're required to send us a postcard. And we have a wall in our office with all the postcards from people. And we are going to plan, and we're going to put them on our website uh, soon as well. So. That's the postcard we're a bit. Okay, now uh, that's uh, out of the way. Let's talk about 
backups. Now, the first thing that I'm going to say about this is there is really no one size fits all for backups. Everybody does it a little bit differently and it depends on a lot of factors. Um, most important one is uh, the, uh, how your team is organized, how big your company is. Probably Facebook is going to manage backups in an entirely other way than uh, a small startup. And everything that I'm going to say during this talk is really targeted at a company like Spasi, where there are only a few developers, a lot of projects, and no dedicated uh, DevOps team. So, how did we do hosting in our company in the past? Um, up until a few years ago, we made relatively smallish sites, and we used shared hosting. It worked perfectly for us. The backups were done by uh, a hosting provider. We didn't really have to do anything regarding backups ourselves. When we um, accidentally uh, deleted the file or dropped the database, we phoned up our hosting provider and we just hoped that they could uh, restore the database or the file. So that was our backup process. <coughs> Excuse me. But as a company, we grew and uh, now we get uh, larger uh, projects and we make bigger applications. And we learned quite a bit about uh, server management. There are excellent resources nowadays to uh, get your feet wet with server management. Uh, one of my favorite sites for that is uh, Service for Hackers, which provides very good uh, tutorials targeted at people uh, with no um, DevOps, er, earlier DevOps experience. And instead of uh, using shared hosting, all our sites are uh, now uh, hosted on DigitalOcean, so it's unmanaged, and we use Laravel Forge and Ansible to provision those. So that's nice. But it's not always that nice. Let's tell a few horror stories. So this happened to me. So last year, one fine morning, I got this mail from support from DigitalOcean. Earlier today, our cloud operations team was alerted to some performance issues affecting the physical, droplet, uh, the physical server that hosts your droplet. The damage was serious enough that this droplet was lost and not able to be restored. So if I summarize uh, this sentence, and they're just saying, your server is gone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and five minutes later, I got a mail, I, I kid you not, uh, with uh, a titled, with, with the subject, Booyah, you have received five dollars of credit. <laughs> so that, that wasn't that good. Our server was just gone from the one minute to the next, poof. <laughs> so I don't want to really bash on, on DigitalOcean for this, because this can basically happen at any provider. And if you Google around a bit, then you find similar stories for every major uh, cloud hosting provider. This is a mail uh, sent to a user of Rackspace that uh, experienced the same thing as, as we did. So, you might think, okay, those fancy um, cloud service providers, they provide backups as well, so I'm just going to uh, mark that checkbox, uh, let them uh, um, backup my sites, and I'm, I'm good, right? Well, here's a third horror story. Um, it's one by Taylor Otwell, who made the, the Laravel framework. And in the beginning of last year, there was a, a big um, uh, denial of service attack at, at Linode. So all the servers were down. But yeah, he ticked the, the backup box, so he thought, yeah, I have backups, I'm just going to restore it, and then uh, I'm good again. But what did he find out? Um, the entire data center of Linode was down. And sure, he could see in the interface that uh, he had made backups, but the backups can only be restored in the same data center. So literally, he couldn't restore his backups. And yeah, he, all his sites were down for, for a few days. This is not good. So what can we, we learn on this? Um, Relying on, on digital ocean backups or in general backups of your cloud service provider really isn't enough. And in the case of digital ocean, they only uh, take weekly snapshots. 
So potentially a lot of data could get lost. If your server crashes on a Friday and the weekly snapshot was taken on a Monday, then congratulations, you've just lost data for an entire week. And also, as Taylor learned, if the data center is down, backups can't be accessed or restored. So lying on the backups of your cloud service provider certainly is not enough. How can we solve this? Well, it's very simple, actually. Just don't put your eggs in one basket. Take care of your own backups as well. And there are a lot of options to do this. First one, a bash script. Um, second one, you can use a hosted service for that, or you can uh, use open source packages that can help you. Let's dive in into each of these options. So the first one, a bash script. Now, uh, I've mentioned a service for, for hackers before, and uh, Chris Fidao, who, who runs the site, made a script to backup uh, a droplet, uh, a server to, to S3. And what it does, it uh, dumps the database with MySQL dump, and it uploads the dump plus the files that you want to backup <laughs> to, uh, to S3. And he explains how to, uh, how to schedule the script with cron so it uh, runs frequently. Now, the downside of the script is, yeah, it works really well. But the only thing that bothers me a bit is that there are no notifications when something goes wrong. If uh, your cron uh, has problems or if the script for any reason has problems, you won't get notified of that. And you think you have backups, but you don't have backups, which is not that good. Um, next option you have, um, uh, a hosted service. And I picked automatic.io uh, here because it's a little bit known in the Laravel community. It's basically backups as a service. It's not free, it'll cost you. But they bring a lot of nice things to the table. Uh, they have an easy to use interface where you can figure what should be backup and what not. And you can also, um, uh, use their own storage, which will cost you a bit, or you can attach uh, S3 uh, to their service, so everything that uh, you want to backup is in uh, is in S3. But this will cost you a little bit. Open source software. Um, there's a great backup solution called called Backup PC that I use myself too. It's uh, it's open source software and it's free. It uh, can be installed, installed onto uh, a control server and then it'll uh, just SSH into every server uh, that needs to be backupped and it will use rsync to copy the files over to its uh, uh, local hard drive of the control server. Now, uh, a very cool feature of this package is that it can use hard links to save disk space. It works a little bit like Apple's Time Machine, so if uh, the software detects that two files are the same. It only will uh, store it once on the disk, but if you list the files, you will actually see separate uh, separate entries, but they basically point to the same physical size on disk. So this, this can result into an impressive um, uh, gain in, in, uh, in disk space. Um, certainly for PHP, projects, if you have a lot of the same sites, uh, mostly you have the same files in your vendor folder and it will only s store uh, a unique file uh, once there. Um, the only downside of, uh, of backup PC is that some system administration knowledge is required to set it up. It, it really isn't easy software. You need to know your way around the server and how you uh, configure mail servers a, a little bit. And if I'm honest, the, the interface is really but ugly. It is, uh, but but it does its job. So I'll give it that. Um, so last year, I thought, wouldn't it be very nice if we had a very easy to use backup solution? Because how hard can can the problem be really? Because Laravel provides already a lot of the things to make a great backup solution. So I put in some work and created. Uh, my own package called Laravel Backup, which I'm going to introduce to you now. So 
In short, what can this package do for you? It can uh, backup files and databases to one or more file systems. It can clean up older backups. It can send notifications when something goes wrong. And it can easily be installed into any Laravel application. So the package is gaining some popularity. It has now been downloaded for uh, over 250,000 times. And it is uh, being downloaded 1,000 times uh, a day now. So and that little um, drop at the end of the graph, that's uh, Christmas and New Year. You see that on every package uh, on, uh, on packages. Uh, yeah, PHP developers take <laughs> massively time free uh, at that time, which is good. So let's dive a little more in detail into what a package can do. Um, so the package is called Laravel Backup, so it's good that it can backup files and databases. How does it do that? Well, you can, uh, in a configuration file, you can select files that need to be backed up. And um, the package can also dump your database to an SQL file. And all those files will get zipped, and that zip file will be copied over to uh, an external file system or to the local file system. It's, it's what you want. You can even let it copy it to, uh, to multiple file systems at once. It can also clean up old backups because backups can certainly take uh, a lot of storage. And if you're using something like S3, you're going to pay for every byte you use. And it isn't really necessary to keep larger backups from uh, uh, from every day from three years ago. That's, that's just insane to, uh, to keep those. So the package has an artisan task to clean up the older backups in a sane way. And this task is fully configurable. And um, what um, is also built in in that uh, artisan task is no matter how you configure it or misconfigure it, it will never delete the youngest backup. So whatever you do with that clean command, you'll always keep one backup. That's the, that's the fail safe. And to delete uh, backups, it uses the grandfather, father, son rotation scheme. Yeah, I programmed uh, this cleanup class and later on, I found out, hey, there's a, there's a name for this. It's called Grandfather, Father, Son. Let's explain uh, that, uh, that schema. So imagine that you have uh, every backup that you made for like three years on a disk somewhere. Um, if you run the cleanup, what does it do? It will, for a, a specified amount of time, it will just keep every backup for like the first seven days or something. It will just keep every backup. Then after the, the first seven days, it'll delete every backup except one uh, per day. So you have daily backups. After that period, it will uh, only keep weekly backups, then monthly backups, and so on. So you have a lot of uh, recent backups, but you have less of uh, backups that, uh, that are further down in the past. That's how that rotation scheme works. What can a package also do? It can monitor your backups. So it can uh, detect when <laughs> no backups were ma made in a certain amount of days. And it can also detect uh, if there is too much storage being used. Like I've said, on this tree, it will cost you money. Um, if for your little site, uh, you're going to keep backups for, uh, for like 15 terabyte, there's probably something wrong. And the monitoring part of the package is also fully configurable. When certain things happen, when certain events take place, like a backup failed or the youngest backup is too old or the backup uses too much storage, the package can notify you of this fact. And uh, the notification part is also fully configurable. Out of the box, um, it has support for uh, mail, Slack, Telegram, and pushover. But we leverage Laravel's native uh, notification capability. So if you uh, want to have your notification delivered via another way, it's very easy to add your own driver to it. 
Um, there's even uh, a community effort uh, where people are creating uh, drivers for all notification channels. And I think there are uh, already 50 different uh, packages there. If you want to take a look, it's, uh, it's on, uh, on GitHub. You'll find uh, all those notification channel packages. So basically, the package can send you a notification via every platform that you want. So I can talk a lot about this, but I think it's better if I demonstrate it so you get a little bit the, the feel of it. Let's do it. Right, I'm just going to let this guy stop bouncing. Um, let's go into a Laravel project that I uh, that I prepared. So this is basically a Laravel uh, application. Uh, those who use Laravel uh, recognize the structure, and uh, I've just installed the the backup package into it. Now the package can be configured via a configure file uh, via a configure file uh, called Laravel backup. Let's review. What's, uh, what's in this file? Is it big enough? Can everybody read this? Okay. So the, the configuration is uh, split up into four different sections. First, you have uh, backup. Uh, then you have notification, where you can uh, configure everything regarding notifications. Then we have the, the monitoring part that you can configure. And then we have the cleanup part that can be configured. Let's take a look at the backup part first. So. That one is split up in the source, what are we going to backup, and the destination, to where are we going to send those backups. If I look at the source, then we have files that we can backup and databases we can backup. So if I take a look at files, we are going to include our entire application here. And we can exclude some directories, like the vendor and the node modules folder, because yeah, you can build that up that isn't necessary to backup. Now, in a real life uh, case, you're not going to backup the entire application. You're going to backup a directory that has your user generated content, uh, like the, the uploads or something uh, like that. Um, and here you can see that we are going to um, um, backup the MySQL database, and that MySQL key that corresponds to uh, the name of the database that is being configured in the database part of, uh, of Laravel. Uh, let me make it a little bit smaller. So here you can see that Laravel has uh, some connections and we have the MySQL connection here and you can see that the credentials are being set here. So they are not necessary to specify credentials in the backup file of, uh, of Laravel backup itself. So we're going to back up some files, uh, the database, to where we are going to back it up. Well, um, that can be configured in the destination part. And Laravel has uh, built-in support for uh, using multiple file systems. Uh, it calls those file systems disks. And you can put names of disks here. And I have a disk called backups here. Um, let me show you where those disks can be configured. So Laravel comes out, of, comes out of the box with a file systems uh, configuration file. If I open this one up, then you can see that disks are being configured here. We have a disk called backup with a, a, a local driver. So it's a local directory. And in the root, we can see uh, which directory that is. So uh, the backup disks is, uh, is a local directory. Uh, you can see here that there are a few other disks uh, configured, uh, like S3, which we are going to use uh, a little bit later on in the presentation. Okay. Um, let's open up this again. Okay, let's go over to the command line. So um, I'm here in the directory of uh, our demo application. Um, for those who don't know uh, Laravel, Laravel has a, has a task runner called Artisan, which can be uh, used to um, perform <coughs> command line tasks. And you can see that by uh, installing our package, you gain a few commands. Clean command, list, monitor, and run. Now the run command uh, that uh, takes care of backups, uh, the clean command that, uh, uh, that uh, will clean up 
your older backups and monitoring um, command that will send out notifications. Now those commands, you can um, execute them on the command line, which I'm going to do later. But Laravel also has a built-in scheduler, um, which can execute the commands for you. And the scheduler, uh, you can add commands to the scheduler in the console kernel of, uh, of Laravel. And you can see here, it's just a, a demo thing. You can put any value you want. Um, I've scheduled the backup run command to run daily at 2 o'clock at night, the cleanup command at uh, 10 minutes later, and the monitoring command um, uh, 5 minutes later. But you can um, schedule it any way that you want. But for this demonstration, we are going to manually run those commands. So, um, probably should let you see this. I have an alias, uh, A, which is alias to PHP Artisan. So I just have to type A to, uh, to execute Artisan. Um, if I run backup list now, you can see there are no backups present, which is not good. So it's, it's not healthy to have uh, no backups at all. You can see here the name of, uh, of my application and the disks to where the backups are going to be stored. So if I run backup run here, and you can see that was, that was very fast, that it has dumped the database, it has determined the files that need to be backed up, it has zipped the files, it has created a zip file for those files, it has copied them over to that disk name, and it has, yeah, it has been copying that zip over, and that's uh, successfully done. So the backup is completed. Okay, let's take a look at that storage directory where the backups are stored. And sure enough, we can see, I'm going to open up, ooh, that's big. In the finder here, reveal and finder, we have a zip file here. If I open it up, you can see here that we have our dumped uh, MySQL file and that we have our entire application inside this backup. So our backup is successful. Cool. Um, okay, so that's backing up. Let's go back to the configuration file and talk a little bit about um, what are we going to do. Um, maybe the monitoring part here. So the monitoring part, that's the part that um, will um, notify you when your backups are unhealthy. And when you're, and here you can configure how the the package will determine if your backups are healthy. So the newest backup should not be older than one day. So if your uh, uh, latest backup is seven days old, then you will you will get warned by this, then there is uh, then there is something wrong. And the storage used may not be higher than megabytes. Now for this demo demonstration, I've set it to 30K. In production, you are going to uh, probably uh, set this to a, to a much higher value. Okay, so. Backups cannot be higher than 30k. Let's let's make it a little bit higher. So, if you run backup list, you can see um, uh, the backups that are being made, and you can see here that the newest backup was uh, was two minutes ago, and we're using now 11k of uh, of storage. Let's make another backup. Okay, then we use a little bit more of storage. Backup run. Okay, good. And if I run backup list now, you can see that the backups are not healthy. And before that, they were healthy. And the reason for that is that we use too much space. So I'm running these commands here now um, locally. Wait, I'm going to stop. Bouncing guy. I really can't handle that. Oh, sorry. Quit. If I run the backup monitor now, let's dive into the configuration here first, then it will notify me. And here you can uh, set up the notifications. Um, this is a bit, the formatting is slightly off because the resolution is a, is a little bit low. But you can see here that if an unhealthy backup was found, I want a notification via Slack. And that's what we are going to do now. So if I run the backup monitor now, 
can see here that the backups on backups are considered unhealthy. Good, good. But if I go to my Slack channel, I can see here that we have a notification now. The backups on my site are unhealthy and you get some statistics of, of why they are considered unhealthy. So that's how that works. So and now I can close Slack so it won't bounce again. Okay, how can we fix this situation? We have used too much storage. Well, for that we are going to run the clean command. But before I do that, let's just uh, take a look at how that clean command can, can be configured. So in the configuration file, we have a key here for cleanup. And um, we have uh, a cleanup strategy here, which contains that grandfather, father, son rotation scheme I was talking about. If you don't like that scheme, you can just uh, implement your own cleaning logic here. But I think for the most part, this is a, is a good strategy. And here you can see that um, the period of the, that grandfather, father, son rotation scheme, those periods can be configured here. So keep all backups for seven days. After that, keep all the daily backups for 16 days and keep all the weekly backups for eight days and so on. <coughs> um, and uh, after it has done that, it will uh, apply this rule, delete all these backups when using more megabytes than, uh, than 30K. So it will delete uh, backups uh, starting from the oldest one until it reaches uh, this number. So let's, uh, let's run that now. Um, so again, if I run backup list here, you can see here we use too much storage. If I run backup clean now, it has uh, deleted one backup. So it's under that 30K and the backups are considered healthy now. So that's how that works. Um, let's lastly demonstrate that it can also copy um, the, the backups to S3. So if I uh, comment uh, this out and comment it out in the monitor as well, and if I run backup list now, wait, backup list, and you can see here we have uh, another disk here now, S3, and those um, backups are considered unhealthy because there are no backups present. And if I open up my droplet, this is uh, the view of my droplet, you can see that it's completely empty. If I run backup uh, run now, then you can see here that it will not only have uh, as copied the zip to a disk named backups, it has also copied to the zip to a disk named S3. Let's refresh our S3 droplet. And sure enough, we have a new directory here with a backup of the application of today. If I run backup uh, list again, and yeah, this is a little bit slower because it uses an internet connection right now. You can see here that those backups uh, of S3 are healthy, but the local backups aren't uh, again. So let's fix that by running backup clean. And if I run backup list again, then all backups should be healthy and I've backed my application to two separate file systems. So that's, uh, that's how that works. So that concludes uh, our little tour of the package and what it, uh, what it can do for you. Um, some best practices for monitoring your application. So I've demonstrated here that I run the monitor inside the application uh, that, that needs to be backed up. But you should be aware that your Laravel application can break. If you have, like for instance, a syntax error in, in, inside your index.php file, your um, Laravel application won't run, your backups won't be made, but the monitoring part, which sends a notification, won't run as well, so you won't be notified. That's, that's bad. Or maybe your server may be down, then you don't get notifications or backups. So what I uh, encourage you to do is just install the package inside a Laravel application um, on a separate server and monitor the backups 
of all your applications from there. So in a little scheme, it's this. You have your applications on the top. They have all, um, uh, they all, all are using the, the backup package and they backup to a large external disk. And then at the bottom, we have our monitoring server, which will just take a look at those, uh, at the backups of uh, that backup disk. Let me, to make it a little bit more clear, let's head over to the configuration file again. You have here monitor backups. You can see here that it's an array, so you can monitor multiple, uh, monitor, uh, multiple uh, backups as well. So you can here you can put oops, sorry, the name of the second application here, and you can monitor as many uh, backups as you want. So that's how that works. You can also uh, use the package to backup non-Laravel applications. How can we do this? Well, it's it's very easy. Um, you have your server with which runs your Symfony application or your WordPress application or whatever. You just need to uh, install a Laravel application on that same server and just point all the configuration to the directories of your Symfony application or your WordPress application and just use the backup package. It's 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 very simple. So that's how that works. Um, so, in conclusion, what are the benefits of uh, our backup package? It can backup things to multiple file systems. You will get notified when something goes wrong. It can clean up uh, all the backups. Uh, it's very easy to install. You don't need to have any uh, system administration knowledge uh, for that. And it will only cost you one postcard. Now. There are only uh, there are also uh, a few drawbacks as well. I had only used this uh, application for small to uh, to medium sized apps. If you have a, a larger app, probably you're um, going to have a dedicated DevOps team. Let them uh, handle uh, your backup. Another drawback is that um, this package can consume quite a bit of disk space while backing up, so on, on the server that needs to be backed up because it has to create a zip on the, on, the same, on, the, on the same disk. So you should have enough free space on your disk so in order for that zip to be created. And your application also has credentials to access uh, the backups, uh, which you should be aware of. If one of your uh, servers gets hacked, then your, uh, the attacker might gain passwords to your backups as well. You should be aware of, uh, of that as well. Currently, there are no restore options built in the package, and I don't think there will ever be uh, automated restore options because um, I think every incident needs to be solved a little different. Sometimes you uh, restore just one file, sometimes you restore an entire directory, sometimes you just a restored table, sometimes the whole uh, the whole database, and I think when something goes wrong, that that's what I like. I like to uh, investigate and fix it myself, so I know what uh, what's going on. I think the automated restore options can be a little bit dangerous as well, so that's why I haven't included them in uh, in the package. So um, everything that I've said during this talk is also noted in the documentation of the package. We have a documentation site um, where you can find everything um, uh, that you need to get started with this, uh, with this package. So what are the requirements to use this? Um, we maintain two uh, major versions. Uh, version 4 is the most modern one. Um, uh, you're required to have PHP 7 running. It works in Laravel 5.3 and 5.4, and it uses Laravel's uh, uh, native notification capability, so you can use any driver that you want to, uh, to send those notifications. And the older version, um, that works fine with uh, PHP 5, and can be used into uh, Laravel 5.1 and 5.2, and it has a custom notification system because Laravel didn't have any notification capabilities back then. And we have built-in uh, support for mail, uh, for log, for Slack, uh, pushover, and uh, Telegram. So 
this talk summarized in one slide. Do not rely solely on the backups of your service provider. Take care of your own backups as well. There are many options available. You have that DIY script, you have open source software, and maybe Laravel backup can help you out as well. And it'll only cost you one postcard. So that's everything that I wanted to say about this. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, what if you don't have uh, MySQL as database? Can you skip the database and just back up the files? Yeah, then you just leave the uh, database part empty and it won't dump anything at all. So then you are just uh, backupping files. Okay, cool. So that was a good question, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you said like this is for a small and medium sized application, right? Yeah. Um, so, I would say for medium sized applications, sometimes we have, I mean, we pretty much use AWS. I think everyone, most of them, mm -hmm. started moving in AWS now. And then AWS has its own um, backup system, right? Mm -hmm. So, I feel like it's good for a small application for dev people who just manage one or two small websites. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to understand what's, um, I mean, how we can utilize this tool who already have um, hosted in AWS and they have, you know, their own backup system. So, your question is if you're so already. I feel like it's little, I mean, I wouldn't say it's. Um, um, it's not useful, but I feel like, you know, um, the, for example, let's say um, I have a small website, but I'm hosting on AWS and mm -hmm. it has uh, its own backup system. Yeah. Right. In, the, in that case, I possibly don't use this one because uh, I have, um, you know, backup on AWS and whenever I like to restore, I can go and restore. Yeah. I've, I've tried to emphasize during the talk that yeah, everybody has its own strategy of doing things and you should do what, what feels best to you. I, I want to underline that don't really rely on one partner, rely on something, something else instead. And I really don't care which other thing that it is. It doesn't have to be our, our package as well. Um, you should do what feels good to you and what's appropriate for your application and for yeah, the people in your team. If you have somebody in your team that yeah, knows uh, Amazon services and RDS really well, yeah, just use that. So it's really different for everybody. Um, so in that case, for example, I'm just assuming you have another scenario. So I don't use AWS anymore, I just use this for the website. Yeah. So every backup I like to you know, do, can I copy directly onto my local? And then whenever I, you know, for in your case, you know, one of the drop legs not, so you don't really have any more on that individual version. That's interesting. So yeah. I mean, is that easy to do? Like, you know, if I run the backups, is that directly going to download on my local? Or where, where does it, how does it work? I know you saw the S3 bucket um, yeah. location where you can directly um, run the backups, but is that possible to download it locally as well in the same package? To, to download the, the uh, S3 backups ag again? Um, well, it isn't, it isn't automated, but yeah, if it's on S3, you can do whatever it, so that you want. Sorry? So I need to use like, you know, run the uh, migration backup, the backup from the physical host and then manually download the different one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a manual process. Right. Yeah. It's if better if we have, you know, that download file of the same project. So we never run the backup or we can download it as well. Yeah. Let, let's discuss this after the presentation. If you have any questions more, I'll be happy to show you around uh, a little bit. Okay. Um, 
I was wondering if there, as you said, um, if someone gains access to this website, he also has access to your backup servers mm -hmm. because you have to store your uh, login credentials. Um, are the backups themselves, is there a way to, to encrypt them? So, Yeah, um, so the package itself doesn't have uh, any options to, to encrypt them, but you can, figure, you can configure an S3 <laughs> bucket in such that all content that is written on there will be encrypted by, by S3. So that's how you can, can do that. Um, and one way to mitigate the problem of um, if one of your sites get hacked, um, an attacker can gain every, every backup, you can uh, add users to S3 that only have write capabilities but no read capabilities. So that's one way to protect your backups on S3 as well. So you can uh, encrypt them there, you can uh, use a good, uh, yeah, good credentials to only write them. So that's how you can solve that problem. Um, I've got another question, which is a little bit like the one before, I think. Um, you said it would be a good good thing to set up a separate server as a monitoring server. Yeah. But will there be a feature in the in, in the future that you can set up a separate backup server that not connects to another server to load to do an upload, but do a download and save it locally? Um, so the, the question is how the backups can also be copied over to another server, right? Yeah, no, yes. so that you don't have to install your backup package on the server you're backing, ah, okay. but on the backup server. Yeah, um, that isn't supported by this, this package. If you want that, then I suggest you um, use something like a backup PC, which does allow that, which walks into a server via an SSA connection and are things that, but that's a whole different strategy and that makes it a little bit more difficult to configure, but it's a good idea to, yep, to I, have it some sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I, because I like the package itself, so it would be nice. <laughs> uh, if something goes wrong, so like your S3 credentials have changed or permissions on the file system, do you get notifications for that? Or will it just fail silently? Sorry? <laughs> will it fail silently or will we get Slack notifications come through? Uh, you'll get Slack notifications that the backup has, has failed. So whenever that copying process fails, an exception will get thrown, the package will catch that exception and send you a notification. So. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. When you back up uh, files, every time you back up all files. There is no option, there is some basic backup and you backup on the new files. Well, um, I haven't touched uh, upon it in the presentation because I consider it a little bit of more advanced feature. But whenever uh, a backup is, uh, is being made, right before the zip file is created, the application will uh, send out an event containing all the files that will be backed up. And you can catch that event and um, there's a, there's a way of letting the package know, not this file, not this file, not this file, or add this file. So you can add your logic uh, yourself to it if you want to have specialized things. You could, for instance, say that um, uh, when the event is, is, uh, yeah, is fired and you're, you're catching the event and it's, uh, uh, let's say, it's a weekday, I'm not going to back up these files. I'm only going to do that in the weekend. That's how you can, can do that. That's covered in the documentation. Thank you. More questions? Yeah, one in the back. Uh, <coughs> your credentials with the, uh, when somebody hacks your uh, site, what if you uh, create a, maybe you plan to, to create a, a manager, like a wrapper, something for uh, these backups. So the, the backup uh, software itself is mm -hmm. installed into each uh, server, uh -huh. but uh, a manager into the a dedicated uh, server, uh -huh. which is starts, and downloads the results, the, the backup files yeah. from from each server. Yeah. And you can you need only to take care about the the the, the 
backup. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's exactly what uh, the backup PC package does. It uh, it will just go into every server and it will back everything up. But for sake of simplicity, this package does it a little bit different. So yeah, if you only have one application, you just can use your own application for managing uh, the the backups. The emphasis here is on simplicity, but I I do recognize that there is also value in doing it uh, yeah, the other way around. And in my company, how how we do things is we do them both. Actually, we use our package to uh, to to create backups, but we also use backup PC to copy all, over everything. So we do it. Yeah, we have like three backups for uh, for every server and what the uh, cloud hosting provider uh, does already. So. Yeah, it it depends on yeah how you of your personal preference. I think I think the main line is always do multiple backups. Uh, okay. Just a yeah. really quick question: What does it? Um, you had talked about being able to install this in its own Laravel app that you could then back up non Laravel projects. Yeah. So what is what does the package actually rely on Laravel wise that you could? install it itself without having to install a full Laravel application? Well, Laravel uh, already gives you a lot of components to, to easily work with. Um, like, for instance, uh, the, the external file system uh, part, uh, where your disks can be easily configured to, uh, to copy them over to external file systems. Laravel gives you that. Laravel also has the whole system for the notification drivers, so everybody can just add a little driver and the notification via that, that channel will work. And yeah, we also use uh, the, the scheduler of Laravel, with which you can easily uh, schedule those, uh, those commands. So there's a lot of infrastructure that Laravel has that we can simply use. Now I do recognize it can also be built with yeah, custom components, like everything can be built with with custom components. But I thought this is for me the easiest way to to take care of this because I use yeah, Laravel quite a lot, and for me it was the easiest way to uh, implement such a system in a in a fast way because I'm very familiar with with those components. And I think for people inside the Laravel community, it's yeah, you know, it's it's really easy to work with. And I think for people outside of Laravel, it really isn't that hard to get started with it because every single component is very good configured. So, yeah, it's it's. I think I've made it in Laravel because I just know it well. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Then uh, I think we're done. I've uh, copied over the slides of this presentation to Speaker Deck, if you want to look at them again. Um, I uh, want to grow a little bit as a speaker, so I welcome any feedback on, uh, on Joined In. Um, take a look uh, on our company website on the open source page. Maybe we have, used, we have, we have made something that you can use. And if you're interested in uh, uh, Laravel and modern PHP development, take a look at my blog or subscribe to my newsletter. So that's it. Thank you.